All right, what is up my friends? Welcome, we just got our first uh, official uh, big dump of Modern Horizons 3 cards on the old weekly uh, Magic Twitch channel. There you go, a lot of different stuff and a lot of cool things to go over. Before we start though, I wanna briefly touch on like the Modern Horizons sets as a whole, because I gotta have a mixed mixed bag of emotions about them. Uh, you know, on, on the one hand, a lot of cool cards. A lot of really card, cool cards and printed in the Modern Horizon sets over the years. Uh, you know, cool Goblin guards and, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, they feel real compared to, like, the Commander set cards, which are, like, you know, Initiative and all this weird crap. And, like, those can even really feel real to me, honestly, whereas MH sets do feel real. Uh, they have a good chance to kind of augment archetypes and formats in lots of cool different ways. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of cool cards, a lot of cool callbacks. The draft formats are really, really fun. So there's a lot of good. Uh, the only real problem I have with the Modern Horizon sets is, like, the upper, upper end of the bound. Uh, because of, like, the, the top, you know, 1% of the set being, like, the end at 15, like, pretty ridiculous power level outliers. Fury, Solitude, Ragavan, Urza Saga, you know, uh, Hogak, and so on and so forth. Like, those really upend things and make non-rotating formats feel like rotating formats, which is, like, I think it's very, very unappealing to me. Uh, and for it, it sort of just force you to, to play them. You have to play this subset of cards, uh, or else you're kind of just not really uh, in uh, in a brewing space. So I don't know. That's me. So I do uh, have kind of a love-hate relationship with the Modern Horizon sets, but obviously it's fun to look at them, and I'm also excited they're coming to Arena for Timeless and Historic as well. So let's jump right in with the freaking Eldrazi Titans. We got Emrakul, the world anew, was already previewed. Uh, Telemana for a 12-12, had Madness, uh, 6 Carlos. Cast a spell, gain control of all creatures, target player controls, and is flying, pressure from spells, and permanents cast this turn. And it leaves the battlefield to all your creatures. So this one's probably the most scary because, like, you can actually play it for a cheap cost. Uh, you know, Madness, six colorless. is isn't that hard to find a way to discard things, obviously. And then six mana is not that much. Uh, pretty huge, though. Will Mog did a five hours, ten mana for a seven, seven. Whenever you cast a spell, target opponent exiles half for library rounded up. Ward sack, two permanents, pretty big deal. ADBs with counters on it, equal to the raised mana value among cards in exile, uh, which is kind of huge, honestly. Uh, and then has an Iowater X or X number of counters on it. This thing's got to actually attack. Uh, but if it does, the game is mostly over. Uh, that being said, there only is so much room for like that many big idiots. So we'll see how that one works. And then Kozilek's back, 9 mana for 9-9. Nine, nine. If you cast a spell, up to 2 target players. Each manifest 2 cards from their hands. For each card manifested this way, you draw a card. So basically, it's sort of like a super grave titan, right? You get uh, 2 2 twos that are manifested from each from your deck and your opponent's deck. And then it anthems all of your colorless creatures. Um, I don't know if Nine Man is worth a Grave Titan. It is a cast trigger, which is kind of cool, uh, but we'll see. You know, so the Eldrazi are back. Uh, also, Pitch Spells are back, and, uh, you know, it's funny because I actually love Force of Negation as a card. I think Force of Negation is, like, perfect. You know, all, mostly only you be able to use on defense. You know, I think Force of Negation is, like, the perfect power level, but Solitude and Friends are not my favorite, uh, to put it mildly. But these are all Pitch Spells. They all Pitch by sacrificing a non-token creature. So kind of an interesting uh, caveat to have here where you uh, need to have a creature to play and it can't be a token. So if you're not playing a creature deck, you don't really work for you. Although it is funny that in theory you could like pitch a grief and then sacrifice it to Flare of uh, Malice, which is kind of funny. So they can really like, double up on those. But Flare of Fortitude is uh, basically a Teferi's Protection. Uh, gonna keep you keep you and yourself alive. We got Flare of the Nile, which is a hard counter spell, which is pretty sick, honestly. Sacrificing a blue creature that could be a Nark Amoeba, a Merfolk, or whatever. Flare of Mouse is a sacrifice. You get an Edict. Each opponent sacrifices creature or Planeswalker greatest mana value. Uh, that's pretty good. You know, obviously it's like you know it is a two for one uh, in your favor, or whatever. But if your opponent's trying to kill you with an Infect creature or something like that, could do a thing. Flare is the weirdest one. Uh, Flare. The red ones have not always been great in these, but. Uh, you get to copy and it's a source spell by, by sacrificing a creature. That's pretty powerful. Uh, you know, Goblin Grenade and Friends, maybe a Storm Combo deck. And then Flare of Cultivation is 3 mana for a Kudama's Reach, but of course you can play it for free, which is kind of a big deal. So, uh, a Boreal Grazer and stuff like that. So, Paul, pretty powerful. A little more proactive on some of them, which is kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, we'll see how these play out. I like that there's like you know a little more of a cost than just like pitching a spell from your hand, but we'll see how these go. And of course, tons of fun callbacks, tons of fun cards that just look really fun. Frog Mirror Enforcer. You get it? It's like a frog bite and a mirror enforcer, mostly. I'm not sure if, like, the prototype mechanic, like, has to have a color on the smaller one, but whatever. So you get a frog bite for, for four or a, a mirror enforcer for seven. That's just fun. You know, just a cool card. New cards like Thief of Existence. So obviously trying to kind of answer the things already in the format. This was uh, specifically shouted out as an answer to Fairy Time Raveler. We have a green, a colorless, and one. So, like, kind of a multi-card card. 
uh, for a 3-4. Whenever you cast a spell, exile up to one target non-creature, non-land, permanent opponent controls, mana value 4 or less. And if you do that, when it dies, uh, they draw a card. Someone have thought, not Seer. So this can kill their Teferi Time Raveler. Uh, this can kill... Uh, uh, you can exile one, you can exile a, uh, the one ring. So pretty powerful card. You know, obviously it requires you to be playing colorless mana and green mana, which is you know a bit of a bit of an ask, but cool card and cool to see them trying to like answer the problems of the format kind of thing. Card hates that card. Uh, we also have a new cycle of planeswalkers. We have five planeswalkers in the set. They're all one color planeswalkers that flip from a creature into a planeswalker, kind of similar to Gideon, uh, or not Gideon, Kithian, and uh, and Jace Friends Prodigy. Where they uh, they're a creature before their spark, you know it's a story beat, and then they spark into their planeswalker. So Tamios are one mana O3, flying and ever attacks investigate, which isn't bad honestly. If you draw your third card to turn, you exile it, come back. So you cast some sort of brainstorm effect. You good man? Or uh, whatever, you can flip it over into Tamio Season Scholar, which has a two through loyalty. Plus two, so you're a next turn. Every creature attacks your opponent's you control. Gets minus 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 one on the turn. Minus three to return an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand if it's green at a mana of any color. It's kind of cute. And then minus seven, draw cards. You only have a number of cards in your library. Round it up. Emblem with no maximum hand size. So obviously, for a one mana planeswalker, it has to be somewhat tame. You know, um, like you can't go nuts with a card like this. So obviously, you can't ultimate immediately. Uh, but pretty powerful. Probably not really a constructed card, but obviously a really, really cool limited card. Pretty fun card overall. We got Sword of House Markov. Just looking real uh, real edgelord there. Just, oh, look at me. I'm just looking off into the distance. Uh, two out of four, a one four, one four life length. Not a bad body. Can't bolt it. Blocks well. Has Extort, where you can pay a black or white to uh, drain it if you cast a spell. Then if you post combat main phase, if you gain three more life this turn, uh, you exile it, and it comes back transformed. Not hard to do, honestly, uh, with the Extort and the life link as well. And uh, our various other means becomes Soren Ravenous Neonate, which still has extort, uh, plus to make a food, minus deal damage, equal to the number of life you gain this turn any target, and then uh, minus six in control of a creature, becomes a vampire, put a lifelink counter on it. Uh, pretty cool card, honestly. Kind of a fun build around. I don't know if it's good enough for modern, but maybe really, might be a really, really fun historic card. We'll play well in life gain decks. We got Rao Monsoon Mage, 200 for a 1 3, makes all your instant sorcery spells cost one less, so Goblin Electromancer eats your heart out. Obviously, one to try and revitalize Storm in modern. Uh, if you cast instant or sorcery spell during your turn, flip a coin. If you lose the flip, you take one. If you win the flip, you may blink this thing over. So, pretty easy to flip this card, honestly, right? You should cast basically like, two or three spells, and you should mathematically hit it. Uh, and then it flips over into Rao Leyline Prodigy, which gets an extra loyalty for Storm each instant or sorcery spell you can cast this turn. Plus, it make all your things cost less. Minus it to deal two damage divided as you choose among one or two targets, and then draw a card if you draw a blue permit other than Rao. And then minus eight, exile top eight cards of your library. You may cast instant sorcery spells for free among them. So obviously, if you storm off for a bit and then flip this, you can ultimate immediately and kind of keep going. So kind of a cool one. Storm has not been a playable deck in, in modern for quite a while. So this could maybe uh, get that revitalized. We got a Johnny uh, Nakato Pariah to for a one two. Eighty make it two one. So two bodies for two mana. It's okay, you know. If one or more other cats you control die, you may exile this and return it. So if you have a way to sacrifice it immediately, boom, there you go. Two mana planeswalker turns into a, a Nakato Avenger. Plus two, put a counter each cat you control. That's a little, uh, a little specific. Uh, zero to make a two one. Uh, and when you do this, if you control red permanent other than this, you deal damage equal to the number of creatures you controlled any target. So obviously, you need to play red and white and have cats. A little limiting, but and then minus four each opponent chooses an artifact, creature, enchantment, and planeswalker among the non-land permanents they control and sacrifice the rest. Pretty powerful ultimate, honestly. Uh, and then with the ability to go ultimate pretty fast too. So kind of cool. Front's up a little weak, but looks cool. And then we have Grist. Gross, gross, Grist. One green for a 1-2 death touch. Not a bad body. Whenever it or another creature ETBs under your control, if you enter from your graveyard or you cast it from your graveyard, you may pay a green. And if you do, exile it and then return this back. So uh, obviously kind of a green, black, graveyard -y card, blood guest and friends, so on and so forth. Turns into Grist, which is three loyalty, uh, plus to make an insect. Uh, and then mill some cards, and it gets a death touch counter if a black card is milled this way. You can see how each of these cards is a monocolored card that like, cares about helping the other color. Minus disenchant, and then minus six for each creature card in your graveyard. Make a token that's a copy of it, except it's an insect. Pretty powerful, ultimate, honestly. The card seems pretty good. Uh, obviously a bit of a build around, but seems pretty cool. We got six! Wait, where's Ren? Right? With just It's just six. Uh, so obviously it's a pretty fun callback. It's funny we hit the point now where the MH sets are now calling back to themselves. They are... They are now self-referential, yeah, yeah, yeah. rather than being referential other overwise. But six is a three mana for a two-four reach. Whenever it attacks, mills three. Then put a land card among them into your hand. 
As long as it's your turn, non-land permanent cards, you control have a trace, so you can discard a land and cast them. If it's at an EDB trigger, I think I'd be interested also, but only as an attack trigger. It's kind of just too weak for a constructed, I think, but cool card for limited. We got uh, Eldamari, a new version of uh, the Elf Lord, the meta for a 3-3. Uh, future site your elves, uh, your creatures on top of your library. And they can also cast things for free Elvish Piper style from your hand or library. Pretty fun little Elf Lord. And, uh... We got reprints too, folks. One of the big things about the MH sets, of course, is the reprints. They bring in uh, cards that are not already legal in modern, entering the format. We get all the medallions. Pearl, Sapphire, Jet, Ruby, and Emerald, of course. Sapphire Medallion has a long and storied history of being a busted card constructed. Pearl Medallion, not so much. Uh, but, you know, still uh, a pretty cool cycle. Uh, very exciting, honestly, as far as like Mana Rocks go. Definitely combo potential here also with, with Ruby and Sapphire Medallions. Kind of a cool one. We got a, a special guest sheet. Uh, so, y'all love the uh, the uh, elementals, right? Right? Well, they're back. Uh, these will be uh, legal in limited. And then also be added to Magic Arena. We'll see how they want to handle them in a the stork, because I think that uh, these cards are way too good for a stork. We'll see. Uh, solitude, 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 Grief, Fury, and Endurance. And also, Thought Not Seer, Prismatic Ending, Dismember, Persist, and Iteration all on the bonus sheet as well. Very important to note, this adds... Uh, Thought on Seer, Prismatic Ending, Dismember, and Persist to his Historic and Timeless, which will be a big deal on Arena. So, that's pretty cool. And then, uh, we got the old, old Border things here. Obviously, Flood Strand, Old Border doesn't do it for me, because, like, I get to get an Onslaught one. We already have those in Old Border, but, you know, third and set, kind of cool. They'll have a new art, but is what it is. We got some, uh, some reprints from older, uh, older MH cards now available in Old Border. So, Dress Down here, Hard Evidence, Sentinel, kind of cool. As a note, I don't love the Artifact cards not having like a slightly different uh frame so i don't love the old borders on all of these honestly but uh sling gang's great channeler ragavan strike your rich all cool ones uh, unholy heat provisioner expert some cool goblin cards some cool red cards here for sure and then of course versions of these uh elementals as well because why not why don't you have more solitudes in uh in in the thing and uh that's all i got for you so obviously we're a few more cards preview but i'm gonna go over the kind of the exciting ones and kind of give a quick little overview and uh this set will have a full release for me we'll have a full set review uh, happening at a date that will be announced at some point in the future, as well as a full 10 new brews, and a full Bronson Mythic run, and of course Pro Tour Amsterdam, which is coming up reasonably soon, I'll be playing it as well, uh, which is Modern Horizons Constructed for... Uh, that's a, that was a, a Freudian slip there, right? It's the modern format, might as well be Modern Horizons Constructed, uh, and then also MH3 Draft for the limited portion. So, should be a lot of fun, look for all those, like, comment, subscribe, support the content, let me know what you think of Modern Horizons sets, and thanks for watching, appreciate it. Say bye, Karin! Hey, Karin, say bye.